Welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise. My name is Jason. Welcome today to Whiskey Review, where we're going to look into the Laphroaig 1815 Legacy Edition. So this is one I picked up from Drinks by the Dram, and it's one that's now recently introduced to travel retail. That's actually was released last year, and this was meant to replace the current three that were in travel retail, being the QA, the PX, and the Anquan Moor. Now, the Laphroaig 1815 Legacy Edition was actually, actually joint uh, with the Four Oak. And between the Four Oak and the 1815, they came together and those two are meant to completely phase out the current expressions. However, it's kind of joined them for a period of time, as I believe there's quite a lot of stock of the older expressions in the market. So, let's get into the review of this one. Let's stop rambling enough. And if you haven't missed my review on the Four Oak, I'll leave a link to the top. But this one here is a no age statement whiskey. It's bottled at 48%. And the cost selection on this one is fairly similar to the Aquan Mort. Now, if you have also missed that video, I'm just going to leave the playlist in the top corner. So it's first filled American White Oak X bourbon barrels. And then it's transferred over into these new European oak hogshead casks. And so it's got this combination of European oak and bourbon barrels, which is similar to the Aquan Mort. Now, this is sort of part of the Laphroaig sort of range. It was meant to be a legacy as uh, John Campbell wanted to pay tribute to all the people that worked in the distillery before him. So the actual distillery itself is the Laphroaig Distillery. They're owned by the parent company, Beam Suntory, and they're located on Isla, Scotland. Now, the price point is where this one may get a few beatings around, the, around it because it is priced at £86 here in the UK, but in travel retail. So the bottle over there looks very similar to the Laphroaig Law. So if any of you guys have seen the Law and this one, you'll probably see they both have a dark green tube. And if any of you know about the correlation of why they both have it and other expressions don't, let me know in the comment section. But it is a travel retail exclusive. I actually did see it in my local whiskey shop, but they were charging £95. Maybe it might no longer be travel retail exclusive, but According to the duty free website, it's still travel retail. And I believe this has got no coloring in it, but I wouldn't throw it into, I wouldn't say it doesn't. So let's get straight into discovering what this whiskey has on offer into the nose. Start things out on the nose. Straight away, you're greeted with a classic Laphroaig. And I say classic Laphroaig because it's got that medicinal peat. Something I actually didn't find so much in some of the other Laphroaig expressions. You get this almost coastal breeze and it's very gentle. But one thing I really love about this, and that I didn't find in the other Laphroaig travel retail ones, is this almost like fabric plasters, which is something that I just rem reminds me of my childhood when you used to get the fabric plasters and have them all over your fingers, arms, legs, and that note is really evident on the nose. And that gives me, that reminds me actually even of the quarter cast, which is one of my favorite expressions. It then has a sort of burst of juiciness and it's citrus. It's almost like lime juice to me. It's giving me that sort of sweet lime juice character, but not like a grapefruit, which is quite bitter. And it's not the pith either. It also has this note of TCP. And this is something that I remember again from being a kid. Um, whenever you had cuts and bruises, um, TCP was one of those things you used to go to. From there, you move into a note of that classic burnt rubber, like a burnt rubber tire, as if someone's just braked really hard on the road and you just can smell that burning rubber character. And you get this soft vanilla note, but it's almost like not sweet, but it's like as if someone's toasted a vanilla actual uh, pod and you can actually smell that slight toasted character about it. Maybe a slight char. And then on the end, there's this really interesting note. It's not overpowering, but at the same time, it's so evident given time on the actual nose is almost like an aromatic wood. It's like someone's taken perfume and sprayed it over like these wood chippings. And you know, people use these in house in their houses as ornaments and also like refreshers, um, refreshing things. But it's kind of like that. It's giving me this sort of aromatic wood character, but there is a slight oaky presence on the nose. Very well rounded, not too much power and not too much heat on the nose, which is actually quite pleasant. So let's get into the palette next, Slanger. Arrival onto the palette for the Legacy Edition, it gives you this really powerful tar peat coming through, this smoky tar character. Then you get the peat coming through, and now you're making way for a little bit of this minerally, almost like a coastal breeze, but there's some sort of different minerally note 
lingering off the back edge of this one. And then as you sort of make your way through it, the mouth texture, the mouth feel, it's almost oily. It's coating everything in my palette. It's actually sinking here into the jawline, which I haven't had in a Lafroig. So it's rather interesting in that respect. However, you also do get this almost like a coffee note, but it's a very gentle coffee aspect, dark chocolate. And when I say oily now, I'm getting oily walnuts. Kind of reminds me of a very well sherried whiskey, but it's no sherry notes in terms of I'm getting no dark fruit in this one, which means it's very interesting all in all. But overall, quite an oily mouthfeel and that oily walnut distinctive thing right on the end of this one. So we'll get to our last sip and come to our conclusion on the 1815 Legacy. So overall opinions on the actual 1815 Legacy. I'm going to pop this down over here. Overall finish with this one, it's long. It's got this combination of spice, a little bit of aniseed, a little bit of iodine, a coastal character, and the peat. They all seem to last a very long time on the palate, which is quite interesting. And it's still going. It's still making me want to take more of it, which is something I really like, especially when a whiskey does that, but drink responsibly. <laughs> so in terms of my actual rating, I'm going to give it an 89 out of 100. And we keep that over here, so hopefully it can stand. But 89 out of 100, I really like the flavor profile this one had to offer. The only things that really pull me down and say, Jason, oh, don't go and buy this one, is if it's around about 86 pounds when I fly next time for an airport or I see it in an airport at that price, versus something like the Anqua Moor, I feel the Anqua Moor just, it delivered like this. And for the price point, it's not bad. 80 plus to 90, that what I saw in the domestic market, is too much of a price and I feel that's kind of steering away of what people would like in a Lafroy. And I also feel it's got a bit of younger whiskey, but at the same time, I do feel there's older whiskey really just rounding out those edges that are just making it so enjoyable and just making you want to go back to it. In terms of what I recommend time or giving this something a little bit of breather, I would just give it a little bit of time because when you give these whiskeys these time, these peated whiskeys, they really show you the roundness and the character. If they don't show you the roundness and the character and the flavors, then maybe they're a bit too young and they could be a bit sharp on the end. But this one just, it developed on with time and that's something very enjoyable and it's rather complex. But again, the price, just the price keeps coming back in the head and saying it's a bit too much. So that's my opinion. It's an 89 out of 100 for the Lafroy 1815 Legacy Edition. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you have tried it. And also, I feel it's kind of like the law, but not the law. Interesting. And it's got a similar tube. But anyway, that's going to be about it for the video. If you have enjoyed, drop it a like. Hit the subscribe button and I'll leave some other videos on the screen. But it's been me, Jason Whiskey Wise, and we'll catch you for the next video. Slanja.